All right, well, I'm not sure this is the right thing to talk about at the moment, but uh, you can talk about something for about a half hour, and it soon occurs to me I can talk to you guys about quantum mechanics for a little bit. It's one of the things we at least wanted to touch on in here. So this is section 1.6 in Logan, and you hear like just a page or two introduction to you know what is quantum mechanics about, how does your basic quantum mechanics work. Um, so basically, the the point is in quantum mechanics. At least initially, you know, early quantum mechanics. The basic idea is instead of thinking about particles being at a position, you think about some sort of thing called a wave function, all right? So the wave function, uh, which we'll use psi or pitchfork if you like, is, for, we'll talk about one dimensional for the moment, okay? Hopefully we'll come back to this and talk about two or three dimensional quantum mechanics later. And part of the reason for this is it, it fits into our larger theme. We're going to see partial differential equations here, new partial differential equations to solve. So, um, so the wave function, like what is that about though? Um, so the interpretation, here's what he says. He says quantum theory dictates that the particle has no definite position or velocity. Rather, one postulates a statistical or probabilistic interpretation of the state of the particle in terms of a wave function. All right, the if you want the probability that the particle is between A and B, what you do now this is not the probability density, not quite. The um, probability that the particle between x equals to A and x equals to B is actually given by kind of weird, right? The integral from a to b, but not psi, but the modulus of psi squared dx. Or if you like, you could write it like this, dropping the x and t dependence. It's the integral from x to t of psi star psi dx. Where stars, oh, does he use bars? He uses bars. It's either stars or bars. Our complex conjugate. All right. So, all right, we're in a one dimensional system. You guys can tell me. Basically, here's one of the axioms integral from minus infinity to infinity for a one dimensional system. What's this equal to? Why would that be? Because it's a probability function. Right. So the particle has to be somewhere. Right. <laughs> if it's one dimension, those are all. That's the total totality of the state space, basically. Right. I mean, that's that's it. it. Has to be somewhere. So the total integral has to be one. Um, okay. So like, fun, fun baby quantum mechanics exercise. <laughs> right. Sorry. Um, of x. Oh, what the T though? Schnikes. What to do with the T? Mm -hmm. I better I better not start making up stuff at the moment. I'm sorry, guys. I thought I I need to dig out my book so I can state the problem wisely rather than just invent new theories of quantum mechanics that I have to explain bad. I'm afraid both of my books may be home. I have a book. Well, anyway. It might be here. I'll have to look. Alright. But I'm, I'm going to get something you guys can work on before I look for the book. Okay, so um, that's the basic idea is that there's this probability density function the integral of its modulus over appropriate domain gives the probability that the particle's in there. So, okay, so then, you know, what, what plays the role of Newton's, like Newton's second law, what's sort of Newton's second law, or, you know, what's the fundamental relation that um, tells you how it goes. So, given, 
um, you know, a potential energy function v of x, all right? So suppose that the, the particles under the influence of a conservative force and the potential energy function is v. It's just a function of x because we're in one dimension. Then in this case, this following partial differential equation tells you how it goes. So I h bar um, partial psi partial t is equal to minus h bar squared over 2m partial squared psi partial x squared plus v, which is just a function of x, okay, psi. Now he says for t greater than zero, where v equals v of x is the potential energy, m is the mass, and h bar is h over 2 pi. So t greater than zero. So m is mass, right? h bar is equal to h over 2 pi. This h is called Planck's constant, and for what it's worth, that's 6.625 times 10 to the minus 34 kilograms over meters, kilogram meters squared per second. What did I say? Six point. Here's an entirely relevant number. For some reason, I was watching Shaq uh, swim against Michael Phelps on the YouTube yesterday, and uh, one of the one of the things I enjoyed in the video more than anything else was, at some point, Shaq is talking garbage. As you see, Shaq is Shaquille O'Neal. All he does is talk garbage, right? I guess his main thing is talking trash, right? And so he's saying something, and then. Like Phelps is trying to call him on his his knowledge, and he's like, "What's my what's my hundred freestyle time?" And Shaq, as quick as he asks, Shaq responds, "Einstein said that uh, he would never remember what he could look up in a book." And so I, I feel the same way. It's like, I could if I got, I could get my phone, I could tell you. Just give me a minute. You know? <laughs> it's like how. It's true though. It's, we have technology. So it wasn't so. I know Shaq. Shaq. Shaq is so much fun. <laughs> I saw Shaq on uh, that Bear, Bear Gorillas show. The uh, not not Man vs. Wild. He's, he's got a he's got a variant of Miranda. He's got like a celebrity version of Man vs. Wild that he's got on NBC these days. Um, and it's uh, watching him try to haul Shaq up forty foot rock faces. It was it was one of the more fun things I've seen on TV recently. <laughs> Shaq couldn't do it himself. He said his shoulders are kind of shot after. Uh -oh after the years of basketball. All right, um, anyway, so this has a name. You know what this is called? <clears throat> so this is, I mean, it's, it's, anal it's, it's what would be ana analogous to like Maxwell's equations in some sense, in, in electromagnetism or Newton's second law in classical mechanics. This is what's known as Schrodinger's equation, so. Mm. I don't see any cats. <laughs> <laughs> I can't spell Schrodinger. Schrodinger. Don't quote me on the spelling here. Um, but that, that is Schrodinger's equation. Now, um, yeah, he, he references Griffiths here as a good, a good introductory text to read on these things. I think that's true. Griffiths is uh, it's very, very readable. Not as deep as you might want sometimes, but it's it's very it's a good place to start. All right. Um, let's see here. All right. So now, what, what do we do? Well, this is you know our our main theme in here is partial differential equations, except when I run out of stuff to say, in which case I might say just about anything. Um, right. So. Hmm. That's, that's good. That's good. We're on the. Oh, I've covered my trash can up. With... Hmm. Right. So what you do then, guys, is you um, propose a solution, right? You say psi is equal to say phi of x. Um, oh, excuse me. That's not it. We say. I think we say phi of t and that kind of psi of x. So it's like capital psi versus the without the 
without the feet, right? So we're basically going back to separation of variables technique again? Yeah, yeah. Actually, he uses y of x in here, but I guess I could do that. I don't know. Um, what to do, what to do. I guess the science, I'm going to use some other letter than that. Let's use, uh, I guess we can, I don't like to use y. Gamma. Seven. Gamma. Seven. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Good name, well, Cooper. <laughs> All right. Yeah, um, I watch those events cup videos. Uh, dang it. Um, man. Gamma. about phi and theta. I, just, I cannot remember for the life of me. I feel like it was this. I don't know. Sorry. As a physics undergraduate, notation is so much of what we do. Um, this is bothering me. Ooh, yelzers. Whoa. Oh, I'm stuck. Again. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I, don't usually, I, don't think, I don't know if I've ever looked at this book. Alright, what we got here? We got Psi of X. How about... I mean, we definitely use Psi as the wave function. I'm, 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 I'm reluctant to not do that. I just don't remember what the symbols we use for the... Uh, Wave function that depends on both. Uh, oh, come on! Oh, I think we got psi of t. I think we use psi for more than one. I think it's like using it's like p in the in the classical mechanics we have here. You know, you use p for a bunch of different things: momentum, and then it's pressure, and then it's the. Well, fine. Who cares? Anyway. <sighs> <coughs> <coughs> Sorry guys. Alright, so my stupid notational nonsense aside, I think you can tell the difference between the symbol and that symbol. Alright, so basically oh it's bothering me too much. It I need to do something. Let me just put a Oh I guess I'll use phi. There's Probably something bad about that too. I'm sorry, this is very much not interesting what I'm doing. It's one of my vices. I try to hide it. Alright, anyway, so um, there, how about that? Now we have, oh, but now I got capital and lowercase v too. Uh, we can deal. Alright, so tell you what, let's say t of t. Is that better? Alright, so anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> phi, uh, so like partial phi, partial t is what? It's t prime psi ver versus partial phi, partial squared phi, partial x squared is what? It's t psi prime prime, right? And um, so what you got yourself is here at i h bar um, t prime psi equals minus h bar squared over 2m um, t psi prime prime plus v times t psi, right? And I think you know what we're going to do. So divide both sides by the, pro the product function, product of t and psi, and we get what? We get i h bar um, t prime over t, right, is equal to minus h bar squared um, over 2m um, psi prime prime plus v psi, right, all divided by psi, right, equals to, well, no. 
And then again, same like we talked about in the last three, last three of our talks. Um, this is a function of t. This is a function of x, right? So has to be constant. constant, right? And so for physical reasons, this constant we call E. And that is in fact the energy. Um, so like so the Schrodinger's the time dependent Schrodinger equations, which is what I have boxed up there. It, 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 it becomes two, two equations for the separation, for the separate, you know, these, these separable variables. On the one hand, we get I h bar, right? I h bar um, dt dt equals to et, right? Which we can solve, right? That's, um, Those are capital T. That was a capital T, thank you. I was about to get really confused. Thank you, Cooper. Um, Dumb question. What is I here? Is that complex I or is that... Oh, that is I squared, as in I squared equals minus one, yeah. Okay. So this... Um, uh, Alright, so we get um, dt dt, right, equals to minus I um, e over h bar t. And so that gives me t of t is equal to something like t naught e to the minus i e t over h bar. Now, you were just telling me a second second ago you were you were you were cursing your phasers class for not using this notation more powerfully you now understand in your heart that that is nothing more than sines and cosines yeah that's the wavy it's a wave in time right it's an oscillation and the higher the energy the faster the oscillation the lower the energy the slower the oscillation there but it's always oscillating pretty fast because h bar is really, really small, which makes that really, really big. And the bigger the angular velocity is, the faster this, you know. So the uh, you could calculate the frequency. It, it, it's astronomical. It, 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 it is big. Okay. Um. On the flip side, we face. This guy, right? Minus h bar squared over 2m psi prime prime um, plus v minus e psi equal to zero. This right here is the so-called time independent Schrodinger equation, which if you take classic quantum mechanics, you'll spend a fair amount of time solving and analyzing a few particularly nice uh, cases. But as you can see, the start, start of the story is separation of variables. Again, well, this time in the complex domain as it happens, but... If I had planned this better, I would have solved the infinite square rule for you guys right now. But I sadly don't find my, I don't see my copy of Griffiths, which is what I'd like to quote the problem out of. But so the other, are there solutions to that equation, Schrodinger's equation, or is it just the thing that we? study and can't really get to like because like for example with like the wave equation there's a, at least a very generic solution but mm -hmm. can these be solved like 
in the same accuracy as like the heat equation and the wave equation and stuff. Oh, can we can we solve Schrodinger's equation for just um, general like solution. physically interesting examples? Yeah. One of the things I was toying with the idea of is having um, Dr. Skimbordis come and or, or go to him probably and uh, don't really want to make him come talk here and uh, have him show how to solve the uh, the hydrogen hydrogen atom something he's fond of is the solution to this in the case that you know you're looking at a spherically symmetric Coulomb potential as the hydrogen atom. So this the Schrodinger's equation that has to do with like the probability density function you were talking about. Right. So is the point of this year if that's the solution you got for the first part, um you said the more energy that's added to it, the um the slow like uh, the slower it oscillates. So other way around. Higher energy, faster oscillation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, the point here is to collapse the wave function on some predictable. Yeah, I don't know about collapsing the wave function. That's that's outside my uh, expertise. Okay. <laughs> I can tell you this in three dimensions, and this is kind of the same story. Like, um, so we've we've studied in what I. Well, anyway, we studied um, like Laplace's equation, right? Last time. Before that, we studied the wave equation. Um, I, I forget. I guess it's one over v squared, something like that. Yeah. Right. Before that, we studied the heat equation. Basically, I mean, there's some constant. There's some constant here, and there's some constant here, or you could write no constant for Laplace's equation, but um, these are actually, uh, oh, so, <clears throat> to like do a, um, so this, is actually the, the Laplacian squared of you, right? And, and this is actually the Laplacian in one dimension. This is Laplacian in two dimensions. So like if you were looking at the wave equation in like a plane, like something like, um, for example, like waves on a drum or something, it would, it would look like this where, where this could be uxx plus uyy, something like that. This might, if you do it over a circular domain model, like the vibrations of a drum head or something like that. We can do that one later. And then, um, so like the heat equation in two dimensions, like the heat equation for a uh, for a, like a planar region would be like this, or the heat equation for three dimensions would be this. So like the, the we, we've been looking at our first three lectures, we're looking at particular one-dimensional cases, but they, these these examples generalize to like two or three dimensions in, in, in those ways. It's not quite this, I mean, it's a little bit subtle, right? Because like this together was the Laplacian, like we never studied the one-dimensional version of Laplace's equation because it's boring. <laughs> we don't study uxx equal to zero. Okay. No, that's not. I mean, we don't do that. We don't do that. We we anyway. So here's some generalizations of the ones we looked at before. The same is true for Schrodinger's equation. Like in one, this is the one one dimensional. To do it instead of instead of doing it in one dimension, if you do it in several dimensions, then of course psi is equal to something like psi of x, y, z, and t. And um, this term right here becomes. Um, the, the, the Laplacian, right, and um, uh, Schrodinger's equation really what it's saying is that energy is conserved for the wave function if you get right to it. Um, although here I'm making some comments, I don't know if I can, I can back up for you guys at the moment, but um, this is basically what, what you learn as you study quantum mechanics, among other things, is like momentum is represented by 
um, goodness gracious, how's it go? Um, I said H bar. I can't. What I can't remember is if it's H bar over I, or if it's H bar I. I think it's H bar over I partial partial x. So this is the the representation of the momentum operator. You can put a hat on it or something. It's an operator. So momentum is uh, is, is, uh, is is represented by this on, on like sets of functions. And so if you look at momentum um, squared over two m, what that gives you is minus H bar squared. Um, partial squared, partial x squared, right? So, um, and uh, on the other hand, the i h bar partial partial t, I'm, I'm, something, I'm doing something wrong here. Um, I guess that's it. That's it. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. I mean, so this this basically represents the energy, right? Um, the energy operator in some sense. So I mean, if you if you look at this this is kinetic energy, this is the kinetic energy, right? I know I'm being a little bit a little bit uh, fuzzy here, guys. But just to point out, what this is, right? Then is p squared over p hat squared over two m. Um, plus v of x acting on the wave function. So this is this is the total energy operator. Of course, to really make sense of what I'm saying, I'd have to explain to you what on earth I'm talking about here. And that's a much larger discussion. I'm not sure. I really have to think about what you guys have done in physics before I could. I don't know where to start on that at the moment. <coughs> but anyway, in this sense, Schrodinger's equation is just conservation of energy because, um, you know, this is energy and so. But like all, all of these, a lot of these basic equations can be understood as, as energy conservation, even, even um, Newton's equation, right? Like, you, you know it, um, MA. Right, m dv dt equals f. So if f is if f is a potential at force, then that's um, that's velocity, right? So um, let's say du minus du dx, right? So if you take this, you multiply by dx dt. What you got is you got m dx dt dv dv dt um, plus dx dt uh, du dx equal to zero, but this is exactly the derivative with respect to time of one half m v squared plus u. But the chain rule, like the v squared differentiates to two v dv dt. But the half cancels the two, and if you look what you have above, that's v dv dt, and then like do you, do you think of the dx as canceling the chain rule for d dx dt times du dx is that's just d dt of of u, so factor out the d dt, and recognize what it is. It's energy. So Newton's Newton's second law is also energy conservation. It's all energy conservation. I mean, it's, it, that's not entirely. <laughs> Complete explanation because there's you know there's non-conservative problems in Newton's equation and it says things about those problems right but you know in this in this sense it's also energy conservation just like Schrodinger's equation but anyway yeah it'd be nice <clears throat> what I'll try to do for you guys is I'll try to find my quantum mechanics book and we'll spend a day working out Schrodinger's equation and a few a few of the basic examples so you get like a, a better sense of how quantum mechanics is done at least at the elementary level I think it'd be good for you to see especially since you're thinking about the possibility of going to physics graduate school or something. Yeah. Or going to a graduate school that you take physics courses either way. I mean, same animal. In any event.
So I'm sorry I haven't done more interesting things today. I feel like I've let you guys down today. I'm sorry. That was plenty interesting. <laughs>